Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the Everton Daily Live. Sean Dyche has finished his pre-match press conference and we learned that Dan Juma won't be involved at the weekend, but he is back on the grass mm. with the team. Uh, just a Ghana gay. Fine. Yeah. Train tomorrow, it's felt like. Um, everything else, as we, as we already knew, really. Yeah. So... I haven't really learnt much, have we, from no, that press conference? No. I mean, what can you learn at this stage of the season, really? Uh, manager couldn't really comment on the PSR stuff because he doesn't know, essentially, like all of us. And the takeover, the same the same <laughs> thing, isn't it? Just, it's just, try next week, ask next week. Because that's all it seems to be, isn't it? Ask us next week. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, good news that Dan Jim is close to the turn, and because I think we need all of our attacking options available, don't we? And mm. and the manager was right. He the Fulham game, and he got injured. He'd actually done all right, in, but then obviously he was injured. But we could do with him back up because the options are limited, aren't they? Yeah, uh, I thought he would have been back. Obviously, with mm. with the being the time. I mean, what did he got injured? What the first of February. It's January still, 31st of January. Whenever it was, yeah. end of January, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. 30th of January it was. Yeah, yeah. Open yeah. up to be out for this yeah, length yeah. of time is longer than... Must have been ankle ligaments or yeah, something. Yeah, there it was, yeah. So, um, disappointing that he's not available. Yeah. Maybe he'll be available for Tuesday, but mm. a player who's been maybe wasted this season yeah. because the manager has favourites, we all know that, and... But to in Dyche's defence, he's not exactly when he's come on the pit, he's not exactly like pulled up any trees. Has, he? We, has there ever been a game where you've gone, he needs to be playing four or five games on the run now? I haven't seen it. Maybe the Fulham one where he was United. Right. Yeah, yeah. Did he did he play that? Did he play after that? No, no, he scored in that one. No, no, I'm just talking about just general yeah, use of not players. Been many. Yeah, no, it's fair. Just it's general fair use comments. of players. Um you know, use use all. If you've got a small squad, use all of them. Yeah. This manager's chose not to. Fine. Yeah. It's up to him. Mm-hmm. Um, and when he's needed them most, he hasn't been available. So, there you go. It's what it is. What it is. And mm. yeah, um, everyone else should be all right. But this is it now. This yeah. is it. This is the this is the big big part of the season. Two big games coming up away from home and um, near enough fit squad and yeah. 10 games to go Mm -hmm. I said yesterday I I think 13 points is what we need to keep us up Mm. if if we if we don't get any points deducted it might be less than that it might be more like 11 10 maybe Mm. but just right now just right now I feel like we need 13 because I'm still thinking we'll get two taken off us I'm hoping I'm wrong, but who knows? We'll put it this way: if we have any more taking offers, we're not going to know till near enough the end of the season whether we're getting them back. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that's obviously a huge factor in it. Do you think Everton will appeal even if they lose two points? I would. I'd appeal just to make it yeah. uncomfortable for the Premier League. Them as well. Yeah, Forest have appealed. I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd I'd go the whole nine yards. I said yesterday I'd go to Leicester. I'd go to I'd go to uh, Forest and and start and start making some um, proceedings. A legal case against the Premier League simply simply for the fact of how it's all being conducted is a joke. But they won't because no, they won't. I shouldn't even criticise them in a press conference. Never mind say anything else about them. So probably been. He's probably been advised not to, though, haven't he? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? He might want to say it's a joke or this is a disgrace mm. and all that, and, and we'd want to hear him say that. But if the manager's been asked not to, he's not got the yeah, reason. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's what I mean, yeah. Yeah, there wasn't much in there, was there? Obviously, it's difficult when you haven't played for a few weeks. Obviously, it's difficult to give updates on people. He just said everyone's basically fit other than Dan Juma. It's difficult to give updates because you're not really reacting to anything. No. You're not really react- we're, we're going back to what the Manchester United game now. Mm-hmm. You know, normally, um, I mean, let's be honest, it's for Evan, it's been a pretty quiet three weeks. Um, even though, you know, the seven, yeah, but it has though because the seven, seven, even seven, the thing, slap up meal. Yeah, but that, I he mean... He addressed that, didn't he? he addressed, but the, you're never going to get a... You, 
I, I thought it was telling him what he said. It was nothing, but it wasn't nothing, was it? Because Nathan Patterson didn't think it was nothing, no, and you basically off. and you said that, mm. so it wasn't. But but that's that's his point of view, yeah. and and he's the manager, and and uh, but you know seven 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 still hasn't happened, so there's nothing to talk about. Mm. He had an opportunity to talk about Forest, but basically declined, mm. um, and he just basically said we've had that here and this week, and there's nothing to say about it. So it has been a pretty quiet three weeks in terms of in terms of everything else. He. You know, we've asked about Zona and you know what a few people don't like, and I've people have said this to me, and there's a few in the comments saying it and all that is that this thing it's just we just keep doing the same thing and it'll be all right in yeah. the end. That is that a risky strategy, or do you understand kind of the points he's making? He thinks it's not broke. Let's get it right. He thinks he thinks it's not broken. Mm. And he's the manager. And that's his point of view. And you have to sometimes just go, oh, well, that's it then, isn't it? He doesn't think it's broke. He thinks that the stats prove that what we're doing is right. Mm-hmm. And, if, and he may, if he starts scoring goals, it may well work out like that. But I don't it? believe that, though, because mm-hmm. I believe scoring goals is part of the problem. I don't think you can go, you can go, we've got an amazing Formula One coming with you with John Blaney. We have, yeah. We've got an amazing mm. Formula One car, right? You know what the problem is? We haven't got a steering wheel for it. Mm. And if and it's great and everything's boss, just haven't got a steering wheel for it. Not, and it. And it's like, no, but that's your problem then, isn't it? Like, the problem is putting the ball in the back of the net. It's not like it'll all come good if we start putting the ball in the back of the net. Putting the ball in the back of the net is part of the problem. I've been saying this since day one. You can't lean on the fact that you've been that you've been making chances and your XG is amazing. You've got to come up with better ways then. You've got to have a higher XG then mm-hmm. and, a, and a better way of putting the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, a quality of chances is poor. Exactly. It is, and, and everyone, you can use XG and anyone can use XG, but the actual, when you actually ask data analysts and stuff or people who, who are obsessed with the data and look at it, the, the actual quality of the chances aren't great. Yeah. So you might have shots, and I advocate having shots because sometimes you might catch one right and it goes in. Mm. You have to do that, and that's what he's done. Fair play to him. But the actual, when you break it down, Jesse Mar- I keep going back, Jesse Marr said this the other week, yes, it's, it's a bit unlucky because you're missing chances, but it's also the quality of the chances aren't very good, mm. and that's the reason why you're not scoring. Goals and other teams with less ability than us have scored more goals. Mm. So that's what it should be. I've got to get better. Players have got to improve. I just think the manager should be open to looking at other ways then. Put another striker on the pitch then. I'm not saying play 4 4 2, go three at the back and play 3 5 2, get someone next to Dom or get someone next to Beto and try and increase your chances mm. or your goal scoring opportunities that way as well. Just look at everything. Just don't keep doing the same thing because we're in. You know, we're four months nearly without a win. We're in April almost. I know we play on Saturday to the end of March. So at the end of March, hmm. we haven't won for four months and, and we're not scoring lots of goals. We could have a great end to the season where the goals fly in. That's brilliant. Hmm. But I'd still be worried that if we do this, adopt the same approach next season, it'd be exactly the same because it, it lends itself to periods of time without scoring goals. And I don't think you can do that. I think we have to progress. Mm. So hopefully you look at everything and, and come up with different things over the next 10 games and it'll get us enough points what we need to be able to uh, be able to get out of it. Because we are... I know the comfort of the other six points would mean we were higher up and probably just all right. Yeah. But if we'd have won a few of the games in the last 11, we'd be in that position as yeah. well, wouldn't we? Of course. It's not just because we've had points saying enough. We're in a relegation battle because we haven't won for four months. <laughs> We're the only team in the Premier League not to have done it. Everyone else, including Sheffield United, have won a game of football in that time. We haven't. That's worrying. You can't do and, and I had this someone. I had a discussion on Twitter with someone this morning about it. It's like, and they're saying everything's improved. Everything's good. We just can't score. But every manager could come up with an excuse. Like Frank Lampard could sit here and go, we play some great football. I didn't have a centre forward because he didn't. And he might say, if we had a centre forward, I wouldn't have lost my job. Rafa Benitez could sit here and go, the stats told me that yeah, if, yeah. if Dominic Calvert-Loom was available, we'd have, and we'd, Richarlison. Be, and Richarlison, we'd have been fine. Mm. 
Marco Silva could turn around and go, the stats, everything we were doing under me was all right. We just weren't scoring like we are now. We're not scoring enough goals. And yet, I, you know, whatever. Marco Silva never went through four months without winning the game of football. So I think every manager can point to something. The key to those managers is coming up with the fix then, isn't it? That's what management is. The players will always let you down as a manager mm. because you come up with a game plan in your head or the way you're playing. And unless your players follow that, and, and some weeks the players do follow it to the maximum mm. and, and you don't win. That's just football. But if they're not following your game plan every week, you can't go 12 games without, or 11, sorry, 11 games without winning and go, it's just because we're not scoring goals. There's got to be more to it. And that's the challenge for him over the next 10, isn't it? To come up with a plan that works at least on four occasions that we win. Yeah, but as I said, it's if you're just using that, if you're just using the excuse that but we're doing everything right and it's just not putting the ball in the back of the net, then I, I don't, I'm not, that's not for me, thanks, because it's about improving. It's about going forward and improving and changing the style and saying, what's wrong here? You mentioned that. They couldn't change anything. They haven't had time. Okay, mate. That was a weird answer. Okay, that mate. was one of the weirdest answers I think he's ever given, that they haven't had time to look at changing stuff when... He was a white pick for Don Arna and Idrissa and Patterson. Mm. Well, Patterson, James Coleman, well, the other two yeah. haven't played anyway. Patterson and Coleman haven't played. Godfrey's beat is there. I just think, I just think that at this, yeah, it's not. But you can even without having your top players, you can look at different ways, can't yeah. you? Do you know what I mean? You yeah. can have. There's you could reason. still look why at can't stuff. Everton? Why couldn't Everton in a game just go right? We're going. We're talking Michalenko in. We're going to three at the back mm. and we're going to change shape in a game for 15 minutes just to put the other side under a different kind of pressure. Mm. And they might do that. From they what they used that. to. Why can't, yeah, but why couldn't we have been doing that already? That's what I'm saying. Like mm. We have one rigid formation and it doesn't change. And mm. like I know there's a lot of people out there who, who, who will sit there and Go, he's doing amazingly. He's, I, I don't. I just don't think he is doing amazingly. He's I think he's doing. doing I think he's doing a job. Mm -hmm. It is difficult, sir. No, no, I no one could say that. But what I'm saying is, he's doing a job, and he obviously thinks it. It is just coming down to not luck because he has mentioned in the last few press conferences after games about taking responsibility about players putting the ball in the back of the net. So that's you know as long if you're addressing it, but. You've got to look at yourself at times as well and go, what can we do a little bit different? Is there mm. different ways we've played? Can we play in a different way during games? In possession, out of possession, all these that kind of things. Because people will say to you, well, in reality, we've won 31 points, which is correct. But we haven't won a game since December. Mm. We haven't won a game since yeah. mid And your job as a manager is to, to win games of football. You can't know. It doesn't matter if he's doing a good, like a, he's, improve stuff or he hasn't you've got to win games mm -hmm. and, and it's the same with any manager at any football club isn't it but listen for all we know he might they might have been looking at every time sure they have they want to win games Sean Dice doesn't want to stand on a line and watch Everton getting beat does he so they will have I would have just said we've looked at everything over these last few weeks mm -hmm. we've analysed everything and we'll you know we're looking at different ways of playing and all even if you never change it you you Give that out, you know, be a little bit smarter with that. But maybe he's keeping that close to his chest and, and we'll, that'll play out in the next time. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Got to start winning now. Saturday would be tremendous. Um, Bob says, that's a no then to the question, have you changed your formation? Why, Sean, is there something you know that how we don't to change the laws of probability or we'll probably just lose to play in the same way? Adam says the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. G Max says Sean Dyche has not got a clue. He needs to shake the whole team up and play to win, but he doesn't know how. Uh, if he loses on Saturday, get rid of him. Uh, Simon says just wasted my time watching the Sean Dyche press conference. What an absolute melt he is. Stats mean nothing when you lose games and can be manipulated to make you look good or bad. Um, set the team out there and go and score goals take the handbrake off and we might have a chance the game is there for the taking if we are set up right he, he believes in a way doesn't he? he believes his way is the way to get points and is the way that has got us points so far um, yeah. 
it's the same way that hasn't won us any points, uh, any got us any wins in 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 the last few games. Um, but has got us points against Villa and against Fulham away and in those kind of games. Um, Brighton, which really we should have won. Uh, Palace, you know, there's games there which people go, well, we ain't expecting to get anything about that and there's others where you go, we should have won that. <sighs> yeah, there's games where you do think we should have gone for it more or if we'd set up in a different way. And then he, but then he would turn around, I imagine, go, well, there's games where my setup got us maybe like West Ham away. Yeah. Um, which got us, you know, got us mm. something out of the game. So it is what it is. What it is. get wins, mate. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It if, he, if, he, if we carry on doing what we're doing and we get 13 points that I think we need to stay up, then fair play to him. He's done it. That's, that's what it's about. Doesn't mean it's not going to be debated. And I don't care what anyone says. If an Everton manager is in charge of my football club and he doesn't win a game for four months, I'm going to question him. Yeah. End of. 100%. I don't care whether I love him. As a, I liked Lampard. I don't mind saying it. People lost their heads over Lampard. But go back and look at Lampard's record. It was never this bad. It just wasn't. And people were having a go at him. And yet Everton played some nice footy under Lampard. Other times they were naive and, and had big holes in it. He wasn't perfect. He was far from it. But he deserved to be sacked in the end mm. because he couldn't win games of footy. And that's just a fact mm. of the matter. I didn't like Rafa Benitez. He couldn't win games of football and was sacked. Mm. So managers will always be under scrutiny. I like Marco. I didn't want Marco sacked. But could I really sit there on the day he was let go and go, we've made a terrible decision? No, because we weren't winning games. And he only lost three on the run, by the mm. way, before he was sacked. So I'm not going to be hypocritical. This manager needs to win football matches. He's gone for, like I said, it's 30 odd years. You have to go back before you find a, a run like this. Mm. So that isn't good enough for Everton Football Club. And we shouldn't, whether you like Sean Dyche or not, whether you blame him or you don't blame him, whatever, whether you're just right down the middle, a bit like me, just going, whatever, just we need to win, whoever it is. We can't start accepting four months without a win and going, it's not the manager's fault or it's not this pair. It's all of them. They all have to come together. But you can't want, have a go at one manager and say it's his fault, but because you like another one, say it isn't anything to do with him. That's contradictory, totally. So they're all under the, they're all under the spotlight now. They've had a break. We've got a reset. We've got to go to Bournemouth at the weekend and hopefully get a big, massive win because it would be mm. and a huge win it'd be for everything, for confidence, for feel good factor, for just breaking that cycle of not winning games, making it remember what it's like to win a game again. The players getting that feeling of winning a game again, and then we could go to Newcastle in more confidence and get something. And he sets us up well, generally away from home. It's our own, my issue with them is it's not away, mm. per se. It's at Goodison. Um, but we'll see. Simon says uh, 30 points up for grabs. We should be going to win every game. And Phil says exactly that. Change things up and had some competition. Uh, Emma said, so what we learned was they did their usual training, just in the sun. Same coaches, same <laughs> old crap. See, I mean, the thing about it is, though, just by you you saying that is really reflective, I think, of a mood of what has come out of, like, a press conference like that. Is that what he says does have weight to it. Now, a lot of people would just go, oh, it doesn't really matter what he says, but it does create, it can create a mood. And I'm not saying it's everyone, but it can create that mood of, so you just have done nothing. You have just... Clive, off, you've just missing. come off back to back defeats. You haven't won a game since December. You've been away and you've done nothing. You haven't tried to change anything or do anything. Like, even if they hadn't, wouldn't it be wouldn't it just be interesting to hear them say, Yeah, we well, we tried a few different things. We've tried just you know, we've we've looked at different things, won't go into it, but we have looked at all we're we're looking at everything to improve this team to get that first win. Because there is a flatness about the fan base. You know, I think the 1878 put something out on Twitter yesterday saying, this is really hard work, this. You know, they're out there trying to mm. trying to get people going for it. It's like, this is really hard work. It's, it's, 
we all do feel flat. We yeah, all yeah. feel, we all feel like, what's the point? You yeah. know, you've got the seven seven sevens dragging on. You've got the you've got the points deduction. You've just seen what has happened to Forest. A lot of people just feel flat, and they look to the manager and say, "Can you pick us up? Can you give us a little bit?" Yeah. Can you just like give us a little bit of joy, just a li- little something to get Flame us ex- hope. something to get us excited about about Saturday, about the the way we're all feeling. That and it's it, and that that's I think I think that sometimes that's where the man this certainly this manager maybe other managers just don't quite get it. You look at them and you just think sad. Here we go again, and I and I I'm not not like saying that Sean Dyche's role or Sean Dyche's fault in any way i think a lot of managers get i mean look at like i've led this long as time look at like lampard towards the end he looked at his body language he looked at his face he looked like he was, a beaten he man beaten, yeah. does tend to keep a quite a neutral yeah he does negative look he, he is level on everything but it does it it, it is and it's not dice's fault there's not dice's fault but i'm just saying it's like a symptom of it isn't it? it's just like fans just go here we go again. Another another weekend. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, we weekends ruined. Why? Because Everton are playing. That's not like that's not what it's about. It's Football's terrible, supposed to be fun. Football's supposed to be something a distraction from your real life. And yeah, the last three weeks for many people are like yes, Everton. You have a break and maybe go somewhere. Not even think about football. And it's that's to me is where as this and I've said this a few times about this football club where they just fundamentally get it wrong, is they they don't they are barking up so many wrong trees, and I think there has to just be at times just that little bit of a different way of looking at things, and you might even just be lying as I said, you just go, yeah we you know what we've we had a great week we were trying this and we were trying that I won't go into it but you know what where everyone feels refreshed and we're ready to go for the last 10 games. And it's it just gives puts that enthusiasm back into the fan base, which I think is sadly lacking at the moment. And you can understand why. You know, you can, you ever, you can fully understand why people are just at this moment feeling the weight of it. I mean, because it's dead easy. I've seen something the other day saying Everton's chances are going down at 3%. It doesn't feel like 3% to us, does it? It doesn't feel like that to us. We're talking, you mentioned 13 points, and then you start going, where are we getting 13 points from? And that's the thing, isn't it? It's like the reality, the reality of the situation to us is so much worse. You've got the word administration being bandied about, which should never be should never be thrown about. I don't care who says it, but it just shouldn't ever come into the vocabulary of Evertonians when we talk about our football clubs <laughs> in a positive light, ever. I don't care who says that. That should never come into it. Crazy. Um, and and we need something to pick us up. And a win, a win would pick us up. Of course, it would. A win, you feel ten times better. But going into that, we just need something to just pick us up a little bit, just to change the mood, get people excited about Saturday's game, and and possibly then Tuesday's game. Certainly to go into that game next week against Burnley, you want to go into that feeling. Yes, back at Goodison Park, we're playing Burnley because I I be- Maybe wrongly believe a lot of Evertonians be looking at that Burnley game going, oh my God, you know what's going to happen here, don't mm. you? Because it's so on as like the game that we are, we're going to win. Yeah. That it becomes, the pressure then becomes on top. No, you're right. Sean Dyche playing against his old team and uh, it's a game we must win and they don't win games and, you know, chance to do the double. So, um, be nice to just have a little bit of a pick-me-up. And that, but Saturday, Saturday gives the, is, the, is the opportunity to have that away from home. He's done well away from home. He really has. And uh, that's what I'm... That's what I'm kind of leaning into mm. when we've got these two away games that he'll have us set up. I personally, it is messaging. We've said this before when you're talking to the fan base. If I was him today, I would have sat there and gone, yeah, we've looked at loads of stuff, looked at different stuff while we've been away. We've looked at this, we've looked at that. Just give people, give them a bit of candy if you want. Mm. So we all go, right, sound. They've really examined everything. This could be a reset. Now, okay, he might not play out like that because he might still refer to what he's done, but at least he's setting that tone to go, we're examining everything. Mm. We're not, no stone is unturned here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We're doing everything we can to make this football club better. Um, 
give that positive message in across mm. so that people go, oh, all right, we, we, we're trying, these are worried about it like we are and they're trying it. They're the ones who can do something about it and we can't. And you're absolutely right. I've seen the 1878s getting criticised. No, should never get criticised. There's a few people saying, no. uh, shouldn't you be doing this every game? No. Why no, aren't no, you? No. And, oh, but the thing about no, it is, no, it's like, that. Well, what are you doing? Every I see, game, I've then? seen that, and I, I had this argument. I've had this argument for the last three years with when mm. I've seen people talk about stuff. Scandal. And the simple fact is, the same people who were done the marches are the same people who do the flags. Who are the same people who give all their time and, and question the board? Yeah, uh, they're all the same people. And then you got people. I seen that someone saying, t- saying, shouldn't you be doing this in the ground? Why don't you do it in the ground? Mm. I've had this argument for the last three years. I don't I'm under- sick and tired of no, it. I don't understand. It's not it. down to a group of 50, 60, 70 boys and girls, whatever it is. Mm. It's down to everybody. If you mm. want to make the atmosphere better in Goodison, start at the bloody park end. Mm. Start it in the main stand. Mm. Start it in the Bullens. Mm. Don't look at the Gladys Street and the people in the Gladys Street to start the atmosphere. Park end, get you get get up and start singing mm-hmm. songs. Then mm-hmm. it's not up to a small collection of people to get everybody but else. Do you know going. what the thing about it is? It annoys I, me so much. No, it is. It's bad, right? But don't point the finger at anybody. Go and do it. Yeah. If you don't want to do it, keep your mouth shut. Mm-hmm. Keep your mouth shut. If you want it, if you think more can be done, go and join the eighteen seventy eight. Yeah. Then and go. I've got this idea. You know, mm-hmm. lads and, and ladies. You your yourself. bit. Don't point the finger at people no. who are giving up their time trying to make the atmosphere better. If you don't want to be part of that, then just back them. Let them do it. Because yeah. you're not going to go and do it. No. Dead easy. There's too much of this with people. Yeah. There's too much of it pointing the finger. You should be doing this. You should be saying this. You should be. You, you've got a voice like everybody mm-hmm. else. Go and use it. Stop waiting for everybody else to, to fight the yeah. fight for you. Go and p- be part of the fight. I've Having a go at them. Scandalous. I've seen it a million times. Criticising, like, fans. It's like, aren't you a fan? And Apparently not. Though. Aren't these people fans themselves? Can't you get off your arse and do something? Can't you stand up and start chanting or singing or whatever? Can't it's you go to the just, club it's and, everything. and give ideas? People have got... They were li- you were lying again, once again, but we're lying on... A group of people that have been there f- for the last few years in different guises. And as I said, protesting, uh, doing before that with f- obviously doing the stuff with with the f- the you know the end of Frank season and and all that kind of thing. It's yeah, it 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 does my head. I do find it. I find yeah. that. Do it yourself. Really, I find it. Just, it's the criticism though, Pat. It's even yeah. if they don't want to do it themselves, which some people might want to get it. Don't criticize others who are who are trying. A uh, few others saying, uh, Ped, you're right, Sean Dyke is totally deluded. I'm not sure, Ped. I said, didn't say he was uh, deluded. Uh, let's not put Come words in, in our mouth. Deluded. Come on. Um, you know, we had this yesterday, someone saying we'd said he should be sacked when neither. Don't put words in our mouth. If that's your no. opinion, that's fine. Um, he doesn't see the bigger picture. Dan says we can't score or keep a clean sheet. That's a dangerous combination. <laughs> You're absolutely that is right. the worry at the moment. It's all right talking about scoring goals, but we've conceded some silly goals in the last few games. Yeah. Certainly off set pieces as well. Emma says he's got a bigger ego than Onana. He's a dinosaur. He believes in his philosophy and his coaches, so nothing will ever change. He's lucky he's had the points deduction to hide behind because a non existent hierarchy at the club, the safest job in football. Simon says, uh, I work in an industry where stats can be manipulated to make you look good or bad. It's just a poor argument to make, and he keeps using it every press conference to show that's how deluded he is. Um, listen, it'll all come out in the world. Listen, he might get the wins. Let's get. Let's listen. not. Let's not fall into that. Right, we've got ten games to go, and we need. Mm. In my opinion, this is just my opinion. You might think we need more or less. I don't know. I'm in my mind. I've kind of made my mm. peace with thirteen points from thirty. We, just less than half points. I think that keeps us up, we've and got, I think he's capable of doing that. We've got ten games. Mm. Sean Dyche. Will be our manager for ten games. Sean Dyche should be our manager for ten mm. games. And when we come to the end of the season and all the dust settles, we'll reevaluate, won't we? We'll look at where we are, where we want to be, if we can get to that place. You know what points deductions we had, where we would have been without points deductions. 
how the end of the season went. And we can look at it then and we can maybe have a more, you know, we can ed- have a better educated look at everything because because we've still got 10 games to go, which mm-hmm. is, you know, quarter of the season, isn't it? Yeah. So, <clears throat> Steve Kelly wants motto if he wants, if he went. He is on, he is, he's driving the motto He today. is driving he, the motto he today. Is uh, Stoosh, the, the Merseyside derby's April 24th, we told you this weeks ago on here and even before it being confirmed it's all it's it's the 24th of april myth um tom says barkley ben johnson and adarabaya were all free in this summer and will improve us what do you reckon all three of their wages combined would be less than gomez as well all three would improvements i'm not sure if Barkley is on a free, though, I think mm, he's got an option. Air, isn't yeah, it, one? might have an option. I think if they go down, he may well be on a free. Um, ben Johnson, I don't know, Steepy. Ben Johnson's not bad at all. He's quick, he's tall. He's all right on the ball for a free transfer. He'd be a good squad player, but I think he's off to Palace anyway. Um I'm saying he's, there's better right backs around, of course. There is, but if you're looking at right if back. you're looking at no, well that's the thing. You've got Coleman and Young who are out of contract out aren't you this summer? So we'll see. Jay says noticed yesterday again. Carragher on his high horse about Forrest and Everton when Neville suggested the Sly Six should have been heavily sanctioned. He soon changed his tune. I'll be honest, Jay. I haven't watched it again, and I won't because I don't watch anything that I'm on again. I didn't get the feeling in the room. It was like that a few weeks ago. It was, although I'd spoken to him before and after it, and he was totally different. That, but by the by, that's by the by. But I didn't get the feeling. What I got the feeling yesterday was they were having more of a go with Greg because Greg, who's from Forest, he's our mate, Nottingham Forest mm-hmm. fan, basically said, "Yeah, we bought forty-six players, but yeah, it was yeah. worth breaking the rules for because yeah, we stayed yeah, up. Absolutely. They took umbrage with that. 100%. They didn't. They didn't like that." So it's all right to break the rules then. Yeah. That's what they took. I did say the rules are rubbish. The, the reason, the thing what I got, I had to step in. Because I wasn't, I was going to leave them to be. Because it wasn't my thing, I'd yeah, said yeah. my bit. The Luton fan piped up and basically called us and them cheats because they've done everything right and we've just bought players to stay up. And that's why I had to step back in and say, I'm going to say, our thing is different to Forests. We weren't building a stadium. We wouldn't have breached PSR. Now that slightly there's a slight inaccuracy there. But without the stadium, we would be a lot closer to compliance. Which is said, where Forest isn't, they haven't got that to stand on. Forest is literally players. So the breaches are totally different. So that's why I I got back involved because I wasn't gonna, but I'm just not having this narrative that Everton and Forest is the same thing. Because it isn't. Ours is not players, our player trading. Mm has been in positive equity, if you want to call it that, for five seasons. And certainly the last three, there's only been two spent less than Everton. So it's that narrative is nonsense. If you want to throw wages in, of course, that pushed it up. Did Everton do poorly with wages in the past? 100%. That's why I said, didn't it? If you want to talk about Everton being run poorly, I'm with you. I'm not yeah, going to yeah. defend them because they have. But let's not mix the two breaches up, which is kind of what, we got clumped back in with Forrest, which is wrong. And again, Forrest have done what they've done. I was there saying, if I'm Villa, I wouldn't sell Watkins. I'd take yeah, the six yeah. points. Is that ideal? Of course it's not, because you're advocating breaking a set of rules. But the rules aren't set in stone. And they're not there for the re- for that reason. They're there for financial security. And, and I think by the end of it, we'd got back to that point of agreeing that everyone can spend as much as everyone else, as long as there's a bond or, or the owner kind of accepts it and we move forward otherwise but the other week yeah he definitely was on his high horse Steve P says I think it's mad that Girona got Dobbik and uh, Tishkinov both for 13 million imagine we had those two their records are good in the Ukraine that even they scored a quarter here uh, what they did they'd be very good value for money and an upgrade on what we have Dobbik's a beast he's play like a proper Everton centre forward yeah Girona have done great business with that, if you look at it, if you look at the market properly, you can get these good players. Stay. We don't look at it properly, and this might be one thing Triple Seven would do because of Johan Spores and the way he likes to operate. And Genoa 
have done some of that, haven't they? They've already turned their thing around a little bit. The players they're looking to bring in and sell on and all that. We need a real shake-up at this football club. A real shake-up. This might be what we need to shake it up. It might not be. They might be far from ideal owners. But I don't see any, I've said it before, I don't see any ideal owners anywhere right now. All I want with this is a reset, as in I want I don't, a reset is right. I want that for my football club. I want a decision. And we know what the decision is, so just let's get on with it and see what happens. Um, but there's players out there that you can bring in for smaller amounts of money that Everton have done, and they are much better than what Everton have got. That does not surprise me. Exactly. <laughs> but, but you know, you, what do Everton need? They need some pace and they need someone who's regularly puts the ball in the net. They're everywhere. Now, I'm not talking top level. Harland, of course, they cost you money. But there's lads who are, you might perceive as a little bit of a gamble for lower wages mm. who are used to putting the ball in the net. But if they've got the other attributes, they become better players. That's, that's how these fellas come into this country and do well. And then you go... God, he's a good player, isn't he? Then someone else goes and buys him. You know, it's not it's not difficult to do. We've made it look very, very difficult for years. Peter Hall says, Baz, well done on the overlap. You have the patience of a saint. How many times do you have to reiterate it's 19.5 million over, not 300 million, the breach? Yes, it's a breach, but stadium costs couldn't be used. Two thirds of the way through the reporting period because the Premier League changed the rules. Yeah, I've said all this before, haven't I? If those two wooden heads had understand, especially Gary Neville, who owns many businesses, should be able to get that, never mind the Sky narrative. Anyway, well done. Uh, yeah, thanks very much, mate. I did. I spoke to Gary Neville afterwards as well and went, just come here, sit here for a minute while I can take you through it. And you know what he said? Oh, it was just David Ornstein said it was this. What's the point? What the, everybody breaches, though, everybody. And then you, you get all your ad backs and it takes you back down to that figure. If it was 300 million, we'd be sat here going, are they joking? And if it was 300 million, we'd have got about 50 points deducted. So it's... And we'd have some good players. And we, we would have good players as well, to be fair. Uh, Andrew said, I'm guessing Dice said something along the lines of, we're playing a team that's conceded 52 goals this season, have won two in the last 10. Both of those teams are in relegation zone, so we're going to play 4-4-1 and defend for our lives and nick a goal off a set piece. He didn't quite say that, in all fairness. Uh, Dan W says, I'm sick of Dice. He was asked two straightforward questions. One, are we likely to see a change in the playing style? He said he thinks we're playing well. That is delusional. The second, it was pointed out the level of breaches and points deducted. Asked if he said it was fair. He said that's for others to figure out. All corporate stats and facts. Good outfit, but buzzword. Mm. Fair enough, mate. Rob says, I feel like we could copy and paste every one of these press conferences and no one would know the difference. Not all on dice, the usual crowd in the room asking the same questions every week. I was surprised that it took um, one of the last questions to ask him about Forrest. Mm. I was very surprised. It was Will, Will, wasn't it? Will Rooney. I was surprised that it took to get to him. Before. And what did he say about it? He just said, for everyone else to judge if it's fair. It's just a game. <laughs> okay. Um, he didn't say anything, did he? Benjamin says, let's hope we get resurrection one day early on Saturday. <laughs> Fingers crossed, mate. Uh, Rob says, it always seems to me that when we have an injury, our players never come back and hit the ground running. It takes them a long time. And with nine games left, eight or seven, by the time Dan Zuma comes back, he doesn't have much time to contribute. Yeah. Um, I guess... Jay says, I guess Dyche's sense of humour annoys Patterson as much as it does us. James uh, said on Monday, Sunday, plan with the points announcement being zero would have happened by the weekend. With the Premier League finishing work in 30 minutes, I can only see us getting a points deduction. Hopefully they announce it on Monday. Let us have the best chance of carrying on this show overseas. They were never going to announce it this week. They only finished on Wednesday. No, you'd, you'd, um, you can't because... The paper, I mean, John come in here last time with the paperwork for the Forest one, and you're talking that much paperwork. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you've got to write it all up. It doesn't take a couple of days. No, no. And they wouldn't put it out on a Friday anyway, to inf whether Everton were getting points or they weren't, to influence. This is what they said with Forest. Everyone knew the Forest results the week mm. before on the Friday, but they weren't putting it out before the, 
the looting game. They had to let the looting game play and then they put it out. So we were never getting it. I if I, any talk about points, you will know at least after Wednesday, I think. Because it won't come out before the Newcastle mm-hmm. game either on Tuesday. It'll, we'll know by Burnley what we've got, if we've got any. So, uh, Jay says, in terms of the summer, we'll lose Harrison and Dan Juma, maybe Onana and Blantwaite. How do we plug those gaps and depth without falling foul of PSR again? I know big money will come in, but don't imagine we can spend much of it. Well, we can spend because if Everton sold Branthwaite and Onana for 120 million, saying I think we could get more than that, but if they did, Everton could spend 40 million of that on about eight players and totally change the thing, and you'd still have 80 million going into the club. Mm. Because of the down payments. Now, the, the thing with that is that commitment has to be every summer, of course, so you have to look at it and manage it that way. But Everton could totally restructure the whole side with them sales. The, the reality is you only want to sell one of those players this summer mm. and one next summer, maybe. Have to see. Chez says, uh, anyone else looking forward to a slow start on the South Coast? Ease ourselves into the game, get a bit of a feel that. for it and leave with some good stats and facts. Benjamin says Tone Ali could face a longer ban after 50 charges of betting on this season has been found. How's he done it this year as well? He's been banned. But he, needs, he clearly needs help, doesn't he? He clearly needs help. And, and it does bring into... It does bring it all into focus of whether just banning players for betting is 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 is, is the right thing He's to gonna do. He's going to get another big no, ban, No, I know he is, he? but I'm saying... They Just need because. to look at this, and they need to. We we've had this. We had this conversation mm. about betting around football and the relationship it has, and players. It's an addiction, and mm. is it being treated like an addiction, or is it just being treated like you you broke the rules? Is a slap on the wrist. Mm. You know, if this lad is sitting at home and can't train and can't play football, he's gonna succumb to his demons, and if his demon is betting then that's what's going to happen, isn't it? And I think that's where football needs to have a really good look at the relationship it has with mm. with, with with gambling. Sad, isn't it? Um, really is sad. Uh, Jay says, I would think if Triple Seven do come in, they'll have already made their mind up on Deitch. All this time and money they've invested, they won't put up with no wins in 11 and crap football. Deitch hasn't got a fix, by the way. He's only got plan A and he's operating at maximum of his ability right now. There isn't a magical formation or tactic in his armory, but can't sack him this season and leave a rookie in charge. Uh, Matthew says, Afternoon, lads. Hope you're well. I think Deitch needs to use these last team, 10 games rather, to try and impress whichever owner we'll have next season. Struggling to stay up will be no advert for him. He's risk averse and he's scared of making proactive position changes if we're winning games. I struggle with the thought of him taking us into our last season at Goodison. Jez says, I still agree with Baz's idea of rolling monthly contracts for managers. Would be kind of exciting, at least. Yeah, you've got to win two of the four games in a month to keep your contract for the next month. Be funny. Hmm? Be entertaining, wouldn't it? Just like announce it, like, like when you do the when you did the cards and FIFA. Hmm? Just, just like, and you have to come out of fireworks. Get speed, to, shoot get speed to do it. And just ready, get speed to do yeah. it. Ditchy! I've got four more games. And then whoever... Mauro Hainio and all of that, and then it's in for it. It'd be great, wouldn't it? Rahudson! Ra- Ra- <laughs> Imagine it. Uh, Brian says, maybe you should have a club call after the press conference. I doubt there'd be a shortage of callers. Crikey, I feel like a volcano ready to erupt. What a... It's just a press conference. He's put a, a, a word in that I don't want to say about, because I'm not sure he means that, but... What a blank we have for a manager. I hope I'm proved wrong. Jay says the fan base is on its arse. Three years of us being the club's only hope with no evidence of anything changes. Um, Jay says if Deitch has done great, by the way, why haven't we won since December the 16th? He did well for a spell. That spell is over. Dave 023 says, I get the people who don't like Deitch. I think the very valid arguments he isn't doing well enough. The thing I'll never understand is the constant farming of negativity on social media and in the comments section. People who want him sacked right now are mad in my opinion. People who want him sacked at the end of the season, get behind him until then. We're still in danger and as a fan base we're sleepwalking so it's the championship whining all the way. No, 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 not as a fan base. As a football club. 
the fan base aren't sleepwalking anyway. You've got to separate anyway. the two of them. It's not the fan... The fan base do not play games of football. What fan bases say in comments on YouTube or Twitter does not win games of football. It does not matter. It really doesn't matter. People go on social media, and this is what the thing I don't understand about people is. People go on social media to voice an opinion in that moment, how they feel right then in that moment. I often, and other people often get pulled up on things they said. You said this ages ago. So what? That's what I meant in that moment. Do I feel like that right now? No. It's a, things like Twitter and comments, the mic, micro-blogging sites, it's how you feel. It's like if you were writing a diary, you might feel on this day, I feel terrible today. I had a terrible day. I feel awful. Blah, blah, blah. You could say you want to do the worst things in, your, the, in the world to yourself. The next day, you might be like, feel great today, I've had a good day, this has happened that day. That's what social media is. It's you want to contact with people and so they go, you know what, that's how I feel as well. That's how I feel. This, like, I don't get how, like, people jump on social media as this, like, as it's like VAR. It's not the thing. The people are just going towards each other because that's how they feel. When we go into a stadium... You leave that behind, I think. I think a lot of people leave that behind and go, right, we're in the stadium. I feel completely different now. Mm. I might have said something yesterday where I'm like, I can't be doing this. He's doing me head in, blah, blah, blah. You get in the stadium, you generally get behind because it's a different set. It's real life. Set different set of circumstances. You suddenly feel like you've got an element of... Going to match, you feel like you've got an element of control, don't you? You feel... Mm. it's You don't, but you feel like you do. Mm. And I think that comes out in how you respond to a game of football. If you see the team and then they've had a slow start, so it's, oh, well, fucking hell, come on! And then everyone, everyone, mm -hmm. you not know, like when someone has a chance and everyone goes, oh my God, how did he miss that? And it's nil-nil and, and everyone just goes, everyone, come on! And then suddenly the crowd lifts mm -hmm. up and sometimes a tackle can do that. That's real. Social media isn't real and never will be real in those terms. And I think that's where people have to look at it and go, oh, it creates this and it creates this. It, 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 yes. People go on there and go, and you'll get a lot more negativity. I feel because when people are feeling happy, they don't. They're not looking at the phone. They're no, not looking they're to connect the to people. They're not looking to connect to people to with somebody else. They're having a conversation. They don't need to pick up the phone. But when, maybe when someone's feeling a little bit low, they pick up the phone and go, oh, "I feel terrible about what's going on at Evan," and they want someone else maybe to go, "No, no, honestly, it'll be sad. Mm. It'll be sad." It's like why it's you know you. You people who watch this right now, they've just watched the press comments. They want somebody to have a chat to almost. Mm. You're sitting, you might be alone, and you want someone to have a chat about. And you're mm. this is like a I do it all the time. I watch a film, and the first thing I do is go, I want to listen to a podcast or I want to watch a YouTube video about that film to see how that person did that person feel like I did about that mm. or whatever. It's just communication, isn't it? That's all it is. And that negativity, I don't think... Sometimes it'll go into a stadium or whatever, but very rarely when you get the game, it's different circumstances. Well, it's you the react, real world. You the react real world. to what's in front of you. Yeah. Everyone. I've not felt anything other than everyone wanting the team to win when we've yeah. gone in Goodison. Really. Mm. I haven't felt... I didn't feel that it was toxic, which is hilarious, mm. it's very, uh, term, when Lampard was losing games. I think people wanted us no. to win. Benitez, yeah, there was a, there was that element there. You can't get away from that. But people still wanted Everton to win. Mm. And it's not with Dice. The thing is, what you get is you get people who want to defend the manager having a go with people who are questioning the manager. Well, why can't the yeah. people who are questioning the manager question them if you're coming yeah. on and defending the manager then? It's the same thing, isn't it? But what I've seen is a lot of people who were who just decided they didn't like Lampard because he was from London or whatever were just incessant with him, no matter what, having a go at him. Are the same people who pop up on my thing who won't have a word said against Sean Dyche. And I find that mad because Lampard's record was better than Dyche's in terms of he never went four months. Now, was, was Frank Lampard, should he have remained Everton manager? Absolutely not because the results weren't good enough for him to. But the same people who were slagging Lampard off at defending Deitch when results are worse. So you might look and go, yeah, but defensively we're better or whatever. I get all that. But people feel emotional and wound up and angry and frustrated mm. 
because it's four months since we won a game of football. That's a long time. It's ridiculous. Mm. A season lasts nine months. You're talking nearly half the season we haven't won a game of football for, and you think that's acceptable? Would that have been acceptable with Frank Lampard doing it? No. To some of these people, would it have been acceptable with Rafa Benitez doing it? No. It wouldn't be acceptable with Carlo Ancelotti in charge. So that's why people are wound up and angry and frustrated. So you can't go, just shut up about it and get behind them and then see what happens. Because what happens is, we'll stay up and then if those people did try to go, I want the manager replaced, you'd be on the back then, why he kept us up. Mm. So they're going to, I just want Everton to win matches. I don't care about the manager, in all honesty. I want Everton to win matches and I want Everton to play attack and football at home. And I don't think that is difficult to ask. I'm not talking about us winning the league, them days are gone. To me, it's Monday to Friday is when you cut it all open and mm-hmm. you have a chat about it and you can get your frustrations out. And then when Saturday comes, that's when you're playing. That's when that's when I, like, certainly, I, I've said this, like, when the team, she comes out, I never react to the team. She, that's the team. That's who's playing. Gotta get behind we'll have a chat after the game mm-hmm. and see if it worked. And, go, and then you can go, I probably would have played this player or that player today. I think it's just... This is, it's what we do. It's what everybody does now. Mm-hmm. This is this, this is this is the reality we live in. Is that people don't communicate with each other, and this is the only way to communicate. Yes, do people make massive mistakes in the way they communicate? Yes, it's like it's like when I'll put I'll put something on Twitter, right, and I'll get dogs abuse or I'll get people agreeing with me. I don't react to any of it. I a lot of the time I just mute, mute the conversation. That's my opinion. And I'm not going to jump in if someone says, you're wrong, and go, well, you're a dickhead. I'll just go, if someone goes, you're a dickhead for having an opinion, then that's when I'm I'm a little bit different. But if someone jumps in and says, you're completely wrong, it's like, sad. That's your opinion. But let me have my opinion, going back to what Baz says before, and that's it. I'm, I've just said it there, I think, 10 games, dice in charge, and we'll have a chat about it at the end of the season. No, no issues about that. I've said before, if David Moyes is available next season, I'm going after David Moyes. He's the one I want. People might have completely different opinions, and that's fine. But during the week, it's this idea that it's negative. Are we all sitting here in La La Land and having a boss chat whilst the place is burning down around us? There we go. There we go. All right, Martin says Lampard and Benitez had a long period at the end of the tenures where we conceded at will and weren't creating chances. Under Dykes this season, we're consistently very good at the back and creating good chances. We're simply not converting and there's a massive difference. Results are the only thing that matters, Martin. End of story. Results is the only thing that matters in football. If Everton played creator chances every week like they're doing now till the end of the season and didn't win a game, we just pat them on the back, pat Sean Dyche on the back and go, created lots of chances there, mate. The XC was good, but we got relegated. No, you wouldn't. Well, you might, I don't know. I wouldn't. Football's about winning games. As I said earlier, if you can't score goals, and that's been the problem all season, then that's your problem. You've got to focus on that. You can't say, as I said before, we're amazing, we just can't put the ball in the net. If that's your problem, then work on that then. Mm. And that's that's mm. that when you've had a whole season to work on it. As I said, I go back to the beginning of the season, a lot of people told me XG, he said it, it'll sort itself out. And my argument at the time was, but I'm watching the chances we're missing, and these are not like that's your problem. Your problem is putting the ball in. Fix that. If you put your hands on going, I can't fix that, then Get someone who can fix it, and that's a coach, another coach to bring in, an attacking coach, or changing the style to create more chances. It's not simply saying, I leave it in the hands, the lap of the gods. Mm. Um, and sometimes you feel that. Sometimes you feel that with Dice, and I think that creates frustration. That's what I said before about the press conference. Sometimes you have to create a air of confidence within the fan base. Even if you're talking bollocks mm. and you're lying, you say that. We've done all kinds, we've done different kinds of shooting, oh, we've done all these different kinds of shooting practices this week, all kinds of different ways of doing it. Um, I just think it is what it is, isn't it? And some people 
really like him as some people. Yeah. Really dislike him. We're right down the middle. We just, I just want Evan to win games of football and that's his challenge now. End the story. Results are all that matters. Nothing else matters. Every manager can sit there and go, I was unlucky here and this, you know, I was unlucky there. Doesn't wash. You get results, that's all that matters. Myers says, score prediction, fellas, Bournemouth are unbeaten at home against those outside the top six. Correct me if I'm wrong. It'll be very tough 2-2 two -two for me. I'm going for a win. 2-1, why not? Go there and win. 18-0 to Everton. Everything comes right on the day. 18-0. Just because that's as going to be as accurate as any score prediction, I say. Steve says, uh, Baz and at least one of those signings you should be looking to sell the next summer for a profit to pay for the next set of instalments. Absolutely, mate. That's how we... You're right. That's how we have to operate. The other way's gone for us now until we are successful. So we have to do it that way. We have to bring a few in. Hopefully they develop and hopefully one develops really well that other teams want to buy them then you reinvest and you reinvest and you reinvest that's what it's about that's how we have to do it Matt uh, Thomason or Thomason says uh, the Brantwaite's inclusion in the England squad max, max the fact we had no other players in the youth squads and also didn't we lose another youth player to City this week yeah I've seen that last week it, it is um, it is very poor that we've got we have got a goalkeeper haven't we a yeah. highly rated goalkeeper a clubs are after yeah, him want yeah. to take him in the summer yeah, as well he's so. about 15 isn't he mm. and he's he's, he's kind of, due to join us in the summer yeah, and yeah. scholar forms yeah, but yeah. there's a few clubs there's want him well he's half isn't he half Slovenian or something Shouldn't so a lot like of German clubs are after him mm. um, yeah that is that is that's a that's that's sad isn't it that's sad I looked at all of it to be honest. I was looking like the Wales team the other night, thinking, "Isn't it sad we don't have any Welsh players, and we've only got one in the Scottish team?" And obviously, mm. it is. It, it, that's another thing when you look at it and think how many players you've got on international duty, and that's another level. You look at it and go, "See the market of it." We've mm. got like four or five. It's that's poor. That that's showing you the level of play we bring. Well, even like under silver, like with fourteen or yeah, fifteen yeah. of them, are yeah, go yeah. away on international duty. Absolutely. Now there's like half a dozen. Absolutely. Andy Ray says, have I heard that right? He hasn't worked on anything new. Well, he might have said that. He, listen, he might... But that's what I'm saying. He might have said we don't, that. We don't know. We might, he might be. He might have worked flip on Flip it and say he is weird because that creates positive. That's what I'm saying. That creates positivity, doesn't it? Creates positivity. Uh, Matthew Barry says, it's absolutely ridiculous to even consider relegation as a sound plan for Everton by certain people. I won't name him. You'd only have to look at what players we would be left with. We'd have to start a championship season with a poor squad, short on numbers, and have to comply with much mm. more stringent PSR rules. We shouldn't look at romantic rebirth. You think talk about administration, aren't you, Matt? Um, of Glasgow Rangers, the EFL pyramid is light years ahead of the SPL. Look at Portsmouth, look at Leeds, that's what happens to Everton. It smacks of someone that's never had to worry about paying bills or clothing their children. Yeah, listen, Matt, me and John have done a, a business with Blaine. It's out tomorrow. We we address the administration thing, so look out for that one. But I agree. I, I don't. To me, I don't see any universe where administration is a positive thing for Everton, and certainly not. Would you rather these took over Everton or we went into administration? I don't understand any Evertonian who would say administration is better. I really don't, honestly. Because otherwise, well... If if we went into administration the next few weeks, then we're relegated because the other yeah. nine points come with them. That's it. We ain't getting out of that mess. Then you're losing your players like Pickford, Onana, Brantwaite, um, anyone else of, of decent money mm. who people might think, you know, Calvert Loom, whether you rate him or not, he'd go mm. and things like that. You're losing most of your players at a price that the administrator thinks is fair. Mm. So they would look at maybe something like spot rack or transfer market and go Jared Brantway 25 million that's fair when Everton could get 75 million so the club's worse off at least half if not two thirds of the, the employees of the football club are sacked you're at a, a terrible disadvantage on the playing front there's a chance you then end up in league one before you reset properly mm. it's, it's, it's a disaster and no one in my this is just my opinion by the way I just don't see a world where that's that's feasible. That should be. We've got no other choice. We're on our ass. No one wants us. We're mm. done. 
Uh, Barry P says one of the criticisms of Triple Seven has been basketball related. Yet when you examine the situation, you find out they've pumped millions into the sport, and it's the government who aren't investing. Yeah, I'm seeing that. But listen, everyone's got their own agendas, mate, haven't he? I'm just like down. I just, I just want a decision, and I know where we are. Um, Greg says, Baz, how do you know these things and changes haven't happened in training? Uh, I wouldn't tell a journalist anything. Have you not been watching this? Have I literally not said he might have worked on all this? But also, you're not talking to journalists. You're talking to the fan base. Say this all the time. You're talking to the fan base. Emma says, journalists aren't watching the presses, though, Greg. The fans are. Don't forget, Greg, when you're there, you're addressing... This is something... When I spoke to Frank Lampard, when I'd done the interview, I kind of reiterated to him that when you're the manager, you're not addressing the press, you're addressing the fans. So therefore, even if the manager has or he hasn't, he could turn round. He doesn't have to say, we're working on three in the back, three at the mm. back in training. He should just be saying things, even if he hasn't. Mm. Just be saying things like, we've exhausted everything, we've looked at everything, we've worked on a few new things. That goes out, it creates a, a fan base thing. Oh, well, look, at least they're trying to do everything. That's what it creates. A lot of football's perception, don't forget. Mm. I've literally sat here for an hour now saying he might well have been working on loads yeah, of new yeah. stuff and has chosen not to tell him, haven't I? And if you haven't, you only just cut. Well, I don't know why, again, people want to put words in your mouth. I've no clue. But this is what I've been saying. But I think sometimes you've got to be able to go, yeah. This is we're doing this because it creates a perception and it gives the fans that thing mm-hmm. you've got your handle on it. Nathan says Moy's back finding plays like Arteta, Yobo, Kale, and Pina. Hell yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, Ray says he says the same thing over and over again. There's no mm-hmm. point leading into it. He wouldn't say even if he was going to mm-hmm. change it. Also, Fletcher, I I just think David Moyes is a better manager than Sean Dyche. Simple as that. And I think the evidence is all oh, well, there. Oh, he's, he's miles better. He's, he'll, all the evidence is there. I believe he's a better manager than Greg. Oh, let me just and I believe this. that. I believe that. Yeah. We we won't be looking in the summer for a manager that is going to like take us up to the highest highs because not loads is going to change. I think he's the better manager than Sean Dice. That's it. That's my facts. Opinion. Prove he's a better manager. Trophies mm-hmm. prove he's a better manager. Um, no, Greg. I'm not. We're not wrong to think journalists represent the fans because neither of us think journalists represent any fans. But that Everton press conference is is live mm. and it's available on demand. And there's quotes. No one, a journalist, can do whatever they they're want. They're talking. They're talking to us. Mm. The journalists are asking the questions. Journalists go on Twitter before and say, "What do you want me to ask?" Mm. The likes of Joe and Julia and people like that. They're, they're looking. You know, a lot of them will will ruin. They're looking at Twitter. And other social media and seeing what fans are talking about. So are asking the questions. Maybe Sky aren't. Maybe Sky don't quite look at it like that. But when for me, when you're a when you are in a press conference and you're you've been asked a question, you are talking to the fans. You're not talk what journalists aren't interested journalists in Everton, are they, the question. Really? And therefore, and then they put it on their TV, their radio, and the newspapers. For who? The fans. The fans are the are the are the the person you're talking to. That's the mindset anyone should have in a press conference. I am talking directly to a fan here. Mm. That's that's who that's who's watching. We're not saying we're not. We know we're well aware what journalists are like. We're talking about his answers are for the fans. That journalist doesn't care less. What you know, Premier League productions don't give a toss what Sean Dyke says about Everton, really. They just know they ask a question, he gives an answer, and if they can use it in a stock response, whatever they will do. But his answers are for us, aren't they? Fletcher, if you can't see David Moyes is a miles better manager than Sean Dyche, then I think football's not for you, mate. I really do. Whoa, whoa. No, no. Well, I'm just saying that as it is. Look, go and look at the stats. They prove that he's a better manager. Just, just generally, they prove he's a better manager. Simple as that. They prove it. We had him at our club, and look at what he did with our club. Simple as that. He's in seventh place in the Premier League right now. Won a European trophy last season. They, the proof is in the stats. They're in a quarter final of a European and trophy I've been again for three years in a row. 
that's proof. Don't think anyone's saying Moyes is amazing, but he, I think he is better. Greg, it, what yeah. fan groups are in the press conference? We're not... Oh, mate, it, I think you're not quite understanding. You're not, you don't know what we're saying, mate. There's no point having the... I can't ask, tell you Journalists ask questions. The answers we watch. We watch. We, we watch, don't we? We l- listen. We read. When you answer a question, you are answering a question and you are telling the fan base... Because they're the people watching. Journalists are just... They're just the in-between, aren't they? They're just the person asking... Vinny O'Connor's an Evertonian. He under, he knows what the fan base is. Julia's an Evertonian. Joe practically an Evertonian now because he, cause he represents he them for the it, Echo yeah. and lives it. You know, someone like Will Rooney, who's a local journalist, starting his way... Understand. Look, will understand yeah. the fan base and see what the fan base are talking to. Someone like Premier League Productions will just send someone who will ask just a generic question that will be used in round the world mm. about injuries or the situation or whatever. This all we're saying, we're not talking about who is in the press conference asking the questions. It's what Sean Dyche says when he speaks in response to that. We're saying he's talking to the fan base, isn't he? That's what we're saying. It's not the the questions are they're not relevant clearly because. They've got to be asked for him to give an answer, but it's so people can sit there and look and go, right, what he said today. So he's talking to us as a fan base. Forget about the journalists. They're just the conduit between the two things, aren't they? That's what we're saying. Um, But yeah, there you go. Let's just let's not get into that. That's that's what we're saying, and therefore you can you can set the message in. Then Dyke could have said, and he probably is. He probably has been working on stuff. So therefore, say it. Just sit there and go. We've done everything. We've been looking at everything. We're looking at a few new things. We're gonna, you know, whatever. And then everyone just goes sound. And if someone goes like what, he doesn't have to tell them. Of course, why would he? You just go. Well, we're not, we're not really gonna sit here and tell you our training or our ideas, are we? Just be assured we're working on it. And Barry P says, is Stefan Borson the authority? <laughs> no, he's a Man City fan trying to <laughs> get City or something. Yeah. Fletcher, that's fine. That's fine. If you think that it's a disagreeing, it's, sorry, yeah. disagreeing, no issue with that. And if you think it's a rearranging of the deck, yes, that's fine. No, but that's fine as well. No, but there's not a... There is actual, no, but there is actual proof. No, it's he is, not. He's I'm a not better talking manager. about opinions. He's I'm, a talking better about, manager. I'm, talking about, I'm talking about proof. There is actual proof that David Moyes is a better manager than Sean Dice. There's actual proof. I'm not sitting here going, that's my opinion. I'm talking about proof. There's actual proof that he's a better manager. He consistently has worked mm. in the top five, six, seven of the Premier League. And there's proof there. Like, I'm not I'm not being all Billy Big Bollocks here and going, well, I've just found this manager. There's proof over 20 years that he's a better manager. Mm. That's it. That's all I'm if saying. You, if you look at it, Fletcher, and think, all right, he might be a better manager, but we're not going to improve that much by getting him, that's fine. That's because what you're saying is it's rearranging the deck chairs, is it's a similar level. It, to me, I think Moyes is a much better manager, and he's got the trophy to prove it, and where West Ham generally finish, he's done a really good job, then he's done a really good job at Everton. If you're, you know, we're not saying he's... You know, someone like Thomas Tuchel's level, who's won a Champions League, we're just saying, in that, but listen, it is what it is. It is what it is. Right. We're done. We're going. Right. Take it easy. Take it easy, everyone. Have a good day. See you later.